Hey y'all, haven't done a video in a while and you can see I have my economy all gear drive tractor hat on. I've been at the county fairs uh, showing my tractor and the Thresherman's uh, show here over on the eastern shore and we had a lot of fun uh, restoring this old 1960 Jim Dandy tractor that uh, I got a lot of compliments on. A lot of people went out of their way to look at it, despite the big tractors that were all over the place um, around it. Uh, of course, I don't have the room uh, in my uh, my little yard and garage to work on something like that. But it was nice to uh, be involved with the uh, agricultural community, the farm community, and uh, I uh, I was blessed in that with uh, my brother and I brother-in-law and I uh, worked on a little tractor and uh, it's been our project for a year that a guy gave me uh, when I got out of the army um, but I wanted to uh, of course make some give you some spiritual footnotes um, we've all heard in the scriptures uh, the Lord says I am the Lord that healeth thee and you know religious people uh, I, I've noticed love to uh, quote scriptures like that and all, but again, the Bible is only written for people that genuinely have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And to my shock and horror, I have been learning that most people who claim the name of Jesus Christ to have a personal relationship with him really do not, um, or if they have, They've taken the broad road because it costs them too much to follow him in spirit, in their heart. No, they would much rather have a storefront faith, what I call a storefront faith. Kind of like, um, I don't know, the mob used to do. There was all kinds of wicked things going on and behind a storefront, a legitimate clean, nice looking uh, thing for everybody to see. It was a storefront type of faith and uh, unfortunately a lot of people I see um, have this. If they've genuinely started with the Lord and they're babes in Christ, they have to learn uh, to hear his voice and discern his leading and you know, work on their relationship in the Lord. That's what a babe in Christ has to learn how to do. But unfortunately, man tries to get in there and play God. This is what, this is an apostate spirit. This is what John called an antichrist. He said many came out from amongst us, but they are, had the spirit of antichrist. In other words, they want people to follow them uh, rather than following the Lord Jesus Christ. And a true Christian will only and can only follow the Lord Jesus Christ. They cannot be diverted off a path by following something other than the Lord, whether it's their Bible understanding, intellectually speaking, uh, their, you know, doctrines, different theologies. Uh, knowing the Lord Jesus Christ has nothing to do with our minds. It has to do with our hearts, our human spirit being reconnected to his Holy Spirit. And the fruits that the Bible are talking about are indeed spiritual fruits. They are your experience, if you will, within the Lord personally. And I have noticed, for the most part, most people do not have personal experiences in the Lord Jesus Christ and simply this is because unless they're babes now but simply this is because they really don't know him they may know all about him uh, this is what seminaries have um, you know ever since the time of Martin Luther and uh, when the Bible was put into print a man has been able to study the scriptures and theology and it, it's it's been a blessing uh, like I've said in some other videos to uh, uh, the Western world, the Christian informed nation, the Christian informed individual in that uh, they are God honoring. 
However, just because you're God honoring doesn't mean that you have to be born again, that you have to really have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ because it is the Lord who calls men unto himself. All that the Father gives me, no one can snatch them out of my hand. This is that the Father gives him. It really isn't a sign up for Jesus thing. Um, and unfortunately, that's what most people do. And a lot of people that have started with the Lord in a spiritual experience have been forgiven of their sins uh, through the atonement on the cross, then refused to follow him. And of course, the Old Testament, Israel, where the New Testament Israel for born again believers, um, paints a picture of how most couldn't enter into the promised land. They started with God, they had God's provision, but they no, most of them did not enter in. And this is uh, many are called fewer chosen type of uh, type of understanding I'm talking about. Um, but if you have the chance, if the Lord's given you the chance at um, being a son or daughter of God, then it is up to you in your heart of hearts to follow him as much as you're able. And when a person's heart says that's too hard or uh, I am not going to be well liked by other people, maybe even in a church body, a church system, a, you know, the point it shed down the road, um, soon they will depart from the Lord in following him in their heart to fit in with the larger world church system. And this is very tragic. And it's a matter of heart. Again, it's a matter of heart communion with the Lord. If we hold the head of Christ, if we are truly his disciples, we will experience a change because the Lord is changing us into the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the counterfeit to this is the storefront, the masking. Um, we all know that, uh, you know, the Apostle Paul talks about not be around people with coarse and, or, or uh, profane language. You shouldn't eat with them. Well, this is, this is discernment of who is your brother by spirit, uh, discerning their actions. Now, there also have been men of God throughout the centuries that had very profane mouths, but yet their hearts were right with God. Um, I don't know, um, perhaps Luther would be an example. A lot of people feel that Luther really wasn't saved, um, that he was just in his flesh and all. Well, there was a lot of profanity even in the scriptures that are used. So. It's a matter, when Paul's talking about being around profane people, he's talking about are their hearts profane towards the Lord? Not did you uh, stub your toe and uh, swear uh, type of thing, or not that you get angry and fall into the flesh. No, it's talking more about um, your attitude towards the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if I'm making any sense to people, but this storefront, uh, you know, saving face type of thing seems to be what most people do. Now, I can be pretty profane myself, okay, and I'm not proud of that, but the Lord knows I have a long history and along the waterfront, the military. Uh, I, um, you know, have ADD or whatever, and uh, I'm understanding from a natural mind type of thing that uh, those people like me tend to lean towards the uni using profanity more than not in expressing themselves. Uh, now, maybe that's an excuse. If, I'm sure it is because if you walk in the spirit, you don't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. However, uh, my heart is still hard after the Lord. And I realize that I'm a broke, broken and fallen vessel and that I need the Lord. 
the, the difference is that people that are um, in systematic theology, these antichrists, just like the, the scribes and Pharisees were in the Old Testament, they're very proud people with their knowledge of the scriptures and their, and their knowledge of God. Um, and so profanity, uh, of course, um, you know, that, that would be one of the uh, things that they just, they just couldn't abide. They, they couldn't stand. But of course, we know like David, uh, he was profane in a lot of ways, and he was bloodthirsty in a lot of ways, but yet his heart was towards the Lord. So the whole scripture is talking about your heart being towards the Lord. And I have noticed that spiritual, the only people that have really have spiritual experiences in the Lord Jesus Christ are true brethren. If you go into a bunch of people know all about the Lord, or just circumstances, <clears throat> which God is in control of all circumstances, even for the natural man, uh, and they can they acknowledge, well, this is a gift to God, or this is there. That's fine. But what I'm saying is the natural man can see that. It doesn't take a person who's born again of spirit to, to, uh, to recognize that. No, the people that are born again of spirit have a testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ actually working in and through them. And uh, the people that are not born again or are simply babes normally will not. And so you have a lot of people in the camp, the Christian camp, that are children of the devil. They're not children of God, but they're children of the devil because they take by spirit. You discern um, what they love. So by spirit, you discern what do they love first? Do they love the Lord first or do they love other things in the world first? And most people want to put on a facade of loving God, but actually they love their own comfort or things in the world that they've been given. And this is why a true believer is normally crushed and broken because God allows that. So they have a need for him, a great need for him and develops a dependency on him. You can do nothing without me. The Bible's not just saying that to sound like flower religious talk. It actually means that, that God will break you and crush you if you're a son or daughter of the Lord, to bring you into total dependence upon himself. And people that can act independently in theology, speech, and all, for the most part, those people really don't need the Lord. They think the Lord needs them. Well, that's just not the way it is. And uh, I almost feel sorry for people like that because they tend to take the broad road and not their narrow way of listening and abiding in Christ. And now we get into Arminian doctrines, uh, which are very rigid. You can't cuss, you can't smoke, you can't drink. You know, you should act like this and act like that. Well, that's that's uh, and all about the perseverance of the saints. And so you have that side of the camp. And then you have the other side of the camp where you can't lose your salvation once you come to him. Well, no scripture disagrees. So ne so that means, that tells me that neither position is 100% correct. It's more like a mixture. It's more like a mixture in that I believe that God elects those and calls and chooses you before the foundation of the earth. If you're his, he starts to do a work in you. You have the chance to start with Christ, but will you finish with Christ? And it all gets down to the testing of your heart. And the Bible tells us that most people who start with Christ will not finish for Christ, which is totally uh, not Reformed teaching, not Calvinistic teachings. Okay, that would be in the Arminian camp. But yet, I don't believe that everybody in the world, you know, you know, because God is good, he loves people, but he... Because God is good, he's good to the wicked as well as to his own. But people confuse the goodness of God for the love of God. God hates wickedness. He hates the wicked. He's not willing that any should perish, and that was the love in sending his, the Lord Jesus Christ. But because God is good in nature, he allows it to reign on the righteous and the unrighteous enough. So all these doctrinal positions, all these 
trying to put God in a box, figure it out intellectually, teach it at whatever type of seminary it is, is all hogwash because all any of us can do is follow the Lord in spirit and have him reveal truth to it. If you want to write things down, there's a million Christian books out there. There's a million different uh, seminaries you can go to. One's going to teach this, one's going to teach that, one has this slant, one has that slant. But the truth of God is found only in abiding and moving in the Lord Jesus Christ. So really both of these things are wrong. And they're wrong simply because they're not, because they're independent of following Christ. They allow man to be in command and control of his life through theology and doctrine. And that's a sin because you're acting independent of the Lord in your own understanding. No, a true brother and sister of the Lord Jesus Christ will know, follow, listen, abide, and obey the Spirit within them. If they don't have the Spirit within them, they never have any true experience of the Lord personally. That's why the scripture says, you shall be a witness unto me. Just the presence of a true believer um, has a difference spiritually around people. And I've seen it. I've seen where true men of God walk into a position and uh, the pastors or wherever avoid them because that spirit of Christ in them already has an effect. They don't even have to open their mouth. They don't have to know their Bible or theology. Just the spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit within them has an effect. And this is how you tell whom your brother and sister are. This is what the Bible is talking about when it talks about fruit. Just watch people. Watch their actions. Watch how they act. Not necessarily do they use a, a foul uh, word or do they have bad habits. Look past that. Look in who is this individual. Do I see Christ in them, the power of the Lord in them? This is what the fruits of the Spirit truly are. Well, God bless you, friends. And I just wanted to do a, a little video because I haven't done one in a while. And be, a, be advised that there are a lot of counterfeits, a lot of antichrists, a lot of people that want you to follow them and their instruction rather than listening and abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ yourself. And I believe because we are in the age of apostasy, the age of delusion, this is rapidly increasing. I don't think you're going to find an organization anymore that truly follows the Lord because once an organization is planted, then Satan gets in there with his counterfeits to trip up the elect. So the elect, for the elect's sake, you know, um, God, God allows a lot of things to happen within their lives to bring them toward salvation. But when you start with Christ, you have to stay with Christ. You don't uh, follow an antichrist, a spirit of antichrist, something other, which is simply something other than the spirit of Lord Jesus Christ within you. God bless. Bye-bye.